crazy, but I didn't know he would. How did it run after that, Cat? It helped it. It didn't spin as much coming off the pond. Welcome to another high octane episode of Southern Dirt Motorsports. Hey, this is Jeff Walker with Southern Dirt Motorsports, and this evening uh, we're out here at the Sunrise Nursery uh, with Jimmy Kale. Uh, he's a, a racer, uh, been a track promoter, <laughs> done a little bit of everything, and uh, out here with Gary Lawrence, he's to my far left out here. Of course, Gary's just been all around all these low dirt tracks his whole life, so we're gonna tell some dirt track stories and gonna talk about being a race promoter and uh, Jimmy, uh, we were just talking right before we got started that your dad had a rule. We, we grew up, me and you grew up in the same neighborhood. Same neighborhood, right? probably what, through the woods there, 300 yards maybe <laughs> yeah. at, at the most. Yeah. And yeah. my dad had a rolling store, run a rolling store all of his life out in the country until he retired back in, I think, in the early 70s when he finally quit. Yeah. After the grocery stores got so popular in town, he pretty much put him out of business. But uh, yeah, that's where I got started, Dad. Uh, Dad had the rolling store, and I just enjoyed racing. I don't know, you know how sometimes you just get hung on things. But growing up, were you like a motorhead, just interested in cars, or I didn't know so much about. I mean, I knew enough to get me in trouble, but I mean, I, I couldn't build motors. I didn't know that much about them. But I mean, I could tear them apart, and you know, take transmissions out of them, rear ends, and stuff like that. Yeah. But uh, I never did get into the motor part of it. But I'd go up at your dad's and watch him when, uh, of a night, they'd be working on an old car up there, and, and, and mama and them be hunting me, and I'd be up at your dad's at Paul's, and he's like, where you been? I said, I've been up there at Paul's. And they just didn't understand, you know, why I was always gone. <laughs> but, yeah. But we built wooden cars back in yeah, our time. Yeah, we had yeah. pushed them around, Gary. That's what we did, did you do anything oh, like yeah. that? You know, if anything had wheels on it, that was it right there. Drag that thing over on Post Road. Yeah, a big hill off the yeah. door. Me and Doug Grissom and them, and we we ride them things off the hill down. We love wrecking them. And yeah, <laughs> you just something to do. But we was talking earlier about we lived next door to Winfrey Hensey, yes. and he was a sign painter, yep. and, and he painted some race cars. And, and back in the day, and uh, they nowadays they have uh, uh, printing machines yeah, uh, yeah. where they put. Uh, uh, like the whole raft, like right, you know, yeah, all the numbers and all your sponsored. But Mr. Hennessy, he hand lettered he those hand cars, painted, and, yes. and, and they they were immaculate. They he did a great job. Yeah. And you were telling me that you had had him to letter where your wooden. I went over one day. I probably I don't know. I might have been ten year old. I don't know. And I said, Mr. Hennessy, what would you charge me to put the <laughs> 308 on that car right there? He he knew I didn't have a dime. He yeah. said, oh, just bring it up here. Just leave it up here. He said, and I'll see if I can get that done for you. So I won't charge you much. And, of course, he could charge me a dollar when I had it. I did not motor yard the rest of the summer. <laughs> but he didn't charge me nothing for it. But, uh, like I said, Charles Hullet was my just my favorite. I don't know why. But uh, Charles, even when I had the dirt track here, Charles always showed up every week, run a record. And they were like, you got to have a record at a racetrack. And I didn't have the money. You know, I was, I was on a low-budget racetrack. <laughs> I mean, I'm telling you, just low-budget. Oh, but Charles, he was quite he was a good one. He, he, was, was a good he one. ended up being a great racer, didn't he? Yeah. races. Yeah, so. Charles Hunt. Don't throw away. Uh, I turn. Yeah. The Hudson Hornet. Mm -hmm. Race a lot with Earl Lawrence, right? Yep. Don Hobbs. Yep. Yeah. Uh, what was that one? Uh, Bobby Stevenson. Yeah, Bobby, Bobby Stevens. Yeah. And, uh, but there's a nothing coming for uh, Bud Fox yep. and, and some of them guys. I mean, yeah. Yeah, Charles was, was a real racer, I mean, and a real good person. Tell us a story about back in the day when your mom and them used to go to church out by the Oak Speedway. Out by the yeah, Oak. yeah, they went out there on uh, Highway 30, there, Church Christ out there. And on Sunday, and they, the old dirt track out there by the V, uh, that's when they ran. Well, mom and dad dropped me off at the at the speedway, and, I, and I'd sell drinks there in the grandstands. <laughs> Pick me up and pitch in for a dollar, you know, <laughs> so I'd have something to do. And, uh, and then Daddy come back to the races after he'd go home, and they'd eat dinner and everything. Of course, I didn't eat. I'm just, I, I just out doing my thing, you know. But yeah, I mean, I love being around him races. I, that's what I've done. But Charles there. Hulley was your hero. He was my you? hero. I, don't, I yeah. just always liked Charles Hulley. Yeah, and they raced on that Sunday afternoon. That old Hudson afternoon. Horn. Right, that's exactly right. And they raced on Sunday afternoon. Sunday right? afternoon. Right? afternoon that time. Yeah. Gary was saying later on they put lights and everything, so. Yeah, they didn't have no lights when, back in, when I was going. When they first started, no, they didn't yeah. have no lights. They didn't. Yeah. It was... 
I don't know, a couple of years in my 40 foot lights up. So you, you got the itch to, to do racing quite, quite well. I had an old car back in the 70s and got started pulling wood and got even ended up driving the thing. I, uh, I wasn't the one going to drive it. Bobby Steele was going to drive it, but it didn't work out. And he did drive it a few times. And and then after that, after I got rid of it and sold it to Robert and Leland, then I started driving it for them. And I don't know, some somewhere through there, after we quit or whatever, uh, I ended up somehow or another buying this racetrack here from the bank. City Bank Trust owned it. And Bill Hill told me, he said, you don't want that. He'd already owned it. He said, you don't want that. And I said, yeah, I believe I do. I believe I do. And but he tried to run the world try to talk me out of buying this place. Let's back up, though, just a little bit about you racing and stuff. So, I mean, were you pretty successful racing? Nah, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I won a few races, but not many. I mean, it wasn't as hard to win then as it is now. It, it, we had a good time. Though, we had, yeah, we, we like beating Bane. <laughs> But the cars were a whole lot different, and you said yeah. the car that you had was an actual ex uh, old Western Cup car, right? Yeah, it was a start of Marlins old car. Yeah, I bought it. I think Bill Hills, who I got the car from, if I ain't mistaken. Yeah. Well, uh, how long did you have that old car? Uh, probably three years, I guess. Yeah. Just guessing. I mean, I'm but not you, really sure. you said you sold it. To I sold it to, to Robert Leland. And then pulled around and started driving it for them. Yeah. And then Gary's dad and Don Hobbs, we went over to Chattanooga and bought two old cars off of Wild Man Smith over. Yeah. And then me and Rob started racing the car, and Bob Hennessy and Leland started racing the car. Yeah. And that's how we <laughs> we, we made a two-car two team, I guess. What you but call Leland Fultz, uh, he was eventually, uh, he was a car owner for Larry Long. Mm -hmm. And his brother, Rob, what you mentioned Robert, Robert that mm -hmm. was his Leland's brother. And so they, at that time, they were heavily involved in racing. Yeah, they loved it. I yeah. mean, they logged all day and, and raced all night. I yeah. mean, they were at Leland's yeah. house, and, and <clears throat> I mean, way over in the morning, welding yeah. through them old cars all the time. But uh, you, you raced at Sparta mm -hmm. Speedway, the new Sparta Speedway, they called it. Did, yeah. you, did you go to the old Sparta Speedway, too? No, nah, I don't remember ever being at the old one. Okay. I'm not even real sure where it was at. Um, but you're running Buffalo Valley. I, I've yeah. been at Buffalo Valley, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. over Duck River and Winchester. So you've raced it yourself. Yeah, I've been around some of Well, what made you think you did want a racetrack? I need a job, and I thought that was what was that. <laughs> had, <laughs> you just, had you been out of racing for a while? Had you yeah, for a yeah. It, uh, I guess I hadn't. After I, I don't remember, blowed the motor up in the car or something. I don't remember. And, and we part one of them, and, and Leland and Bob kept racing. I don't remember exactly what the story was on that, to tell you the truth. But anyway, I wasn't racing there for three or four years. And in the early 80s, but when they auctioned this place off, we didn't end up, we didn't get it. And later on, it the bank owned it. And it was shut down, and I said, somebody, somebody said something to me about, said, you ought to buy that and open that up. And, and the more I thought about it, you know, I was young and stupid, and and, and I fell for it. Yeah. <laughs> about all I can say, I fell for it. But you'd actually raced at this. Yeah, you ever had this same spot? Well, yeah, I got yeah. a picture of Bertha Half. Well, I actually won a feature, believe it or not. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that was great. Yeah. But then, then you eventually they just had moved on and you kind of done other things yeah, and just, stuff. And then yeah. you ended up with the Speedway. And then yeah. that's when all the work started, right? Yeah. And then there, Robert come back and he started helping me again. You know, and yeah. his wife, Linda, they were good. I mean, good as gold. And, uh, we worked day and night. I'd run a milk route of the day and work on this racetrack all night. Yeah. And uh, we just, I went in, of course, I go into everything like I'm going to get rich at it. And, <laughs> and that's what I tried to do, just dirt track. But it's a little harder to do than I thought. Yeah. I never did master it like I thought I could. <laughs> we were we were kind of debating on when we think that this racetrack was actually built. Aubrey Turner was the original he's, yeah, owner. He's, he's the one who built it, though. Uh, somebody had put on the Facebook page, they thought it was in 1974, but we, we think it was a little bit earlier than that, right? Well, I, I'm pretty sure it was in before 74, because I had a car, I think in 71 or 72, if I'm mistaken, when I had that old Chevelle, because I had that gas station in 70, and it was right after I got the gas station when I, I bought that old car. Of course, you'd always hung around having the gas station with Don Hobbs and oh, all yeah. them guys and Gary. And, yeah, and they were all come down every day. <laughs> so, yeah, so you couldn't help but get in. Yeah, I mean, that's all it was, you know. We talked racing. And, yeah. 
just anything. Whatever's yeah. going on, <laughs> we go back there and draw them far away on a take a case of cold drinks for a dollar and you can draw them out <laughs> two farthest away. Yeah. <laughs> we done anything. Just something that, he'd always pick each something other. Something that had but, some competition to it. Absolutely. You know? So you did, you put a lot of effort into this racetrack. How long did, I did. you I, work I, on I, it before you ever opened it up? I bought it day and night to get it open for spring. Uh, I don't remember exactly when I bought the thing. No. It had been set dormant. It, yeah, it had been set in the other. All the guardrail down the front straight door was tore down. The flag stand was tore down. The bleach was rotted. And, and uh, we fell in there and the bank just kept giving me money. Every time I said, I need some more money. You know? <laughs> they give me some more money and I just keep spending yeah. money. Yeah. You, you was fortunate. That, that, uh, <laughs> That's what you showed us a while ago. We're on the on the stand there. You had their had their name on it. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. a sponsor. <laughs> yeah, they they were a sponsor in a way. Uh, yeah. And of course, Debbie Tupper, you know, she kept score for me. And she worked at City Bank. Well, she done all my advertisement for me when I had something going on. She draw it all up, and they had a big fancy printer up there, and she'd run copies out out yin yang off that thing for me. <laughs> I mean, they never. I don't think ever really give me any money for it. Free money, you know. Yeah, it was yeah. on paper before I had signed yeah. for it. But, yeah. but back then, then you paid a good purse. And, yeah, uh, uh, you had several cars. They don't run. Uh, we've talked about previous videos where they don't run as many classes now. Uh, I mean, back then, as no, they do they, now. Uh, you go to places now, and they'll run. Oh, Nine, then, ten yes, yeah, yeah. classes of cars, and back then they only had like maybe three, three classes. Three yeah. classes. All I think we ran here. We had a, a late model, or what they call late model. We called it modified then, and then we had the B hobby, and then we had a, a like a street class. Yeah. Was. But you had Pepper Newby mm -hmm. every Saturday night, and you had our Friday nights. We run on Friday nights. Friday nights. Friday okay. Night, yeah. Uh, you had Earl Newby. You had you know all these guys from Shelton would come. Butchie, yeah, Ricky we got, Epperson. Yep. Yeah. All these guys that come over here. And, had them sixties come out of uh, Jimmy Nolan, over there, uh, yeah. Jimmy Nolan come Nolan. over here. Yep. Uh, they was, like I said, we was getting several cars. Uh, we got plenty of cars, I, I thought. We just didn't draw the crowd like we really needed. Yep. I guess it being a work day probably hurt it a lot. And so what year do you think that you first started? When you first started opening up? When I opened what year was it? It had to be 81 or 82. Okay. Because the picture I found, uh, with Eddie Pace had won, and I'm sure that that Tommy guy's one that gave it to me, uh, it had a date on the back of it. I believe it said April the 8th of 83. But so we had that bad wreck here, you know, and it had to have been in 82 or 83, right along about the same time. Yeah. I, I think I opened this track up in 82 is when I really think okay. I opened it up. Well, tell us about the, you had a big race. Yeah, yeah. I, was that long towards the end? That was a, that's when I shut her down after that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't make no money on that, and, and I said, that's it. I can't but take no more. But you had cars from everywhere. Everywhere, yeah. They was, uh, you had Charlie Schwartz. We had them all. Buck Simmons. You had uh, Jack Boggs. Jeff Purvis. Billy Moyer. Moyer. Jeff Purvis was the winner, right? He, he was, he jumped the fence up there and cut his hand. He thought it was a lap down. I said, Jeff, you'll just wait. I said, I'm calling it on a tape recorder here. I said, if you're in front of the lead car, I said, you're in good shape. I said, if I called your number after the lead car, I said, you're a lap down. And he was, he was irate for I mean, I mean he, but he was in the rear. He was, he was on the lead lap, but he come back and won it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I paid 10000 to win, and I Absolutely. probably didn't have $10 in my pocket when yeah. I done it. <laughs> hey, if something went wrong, I don't, I mean, they, I got pretty much what I thought I would get out of it. The, I done it on the wrong day. I, I just, I was young and dumb, like I said, and I, I raced on Saturday and Sunday. Well, Sunday was Mother's Day. That ain't the day you won't be racing yeah. on Mother's Day. Yeah. And I just didn't take that into consideration because I went by see my mom, dad every day. You know, I mean, yeah. they wasn't five miles from here, yeah. and I was in town all the time. Yeah. So I, it just didn't really register to me how important Mother's Day was. I try to tell everybody that. To see that caliper driver, you'd have to go to Rossburg, Ohio, to the world. Yeah, yeah, back to then. To see all those guys. I mean, you had, I mean, every big name dirt racer at the they time. They was here. They were here. But that kind of money brought them out. Yeah, yeah. and I'll tell you the story on that. Uh, when I advertised in that, that racing news, I got a box of them up there in the building. And uh, the old boy that was covering it, he called me. He said, well, you know, they they're got a big race old Cleveland uh, Friday night and Saturday night. And they got one at Atomic Saturday night. He said, you know, there won't be nobody there. 
I said, well, they've been several of them call. I said, they're paying 4000 one over there. And I said, I'm paying 10000 <laughs> here. I said, I think there'll be some good drivers there. He said, well, I won't be able to come covered. Well, I was busy as a cat scratching on Sunday. He showed up here Sunday. There wasn't nobody where he'd been. There wasn't nobody there. <laughs> he showed up here. But we had the names. We had the cars here. We sure did. We sure did. And Matter of uh, fact, Wade's got a, a, one of those racing news. He's got the the actual pictures and stuff from the race yeah. that I found in this pile of uh, papers. Over the and it was a good there. race. Too. Yeah, it was. It's a good race. But people just don't know what they meant. Us, no. Yeah. I put on a, I mean, like I said, I, I thought big. I thought I thought everything big, you know, big money. I want to make big money and all that. I, I run seven laps for seven hundred dollars to the top six qualifiers. Did now, you? You talking about a show? You, you did it. That. that was a show. Now who won it? I, I forgot. Uh, to say that, I guess. You know, to tell you the truth, I don't even remember. I think. Uh, I think. I want to say Billy Moore your one. Yeah. It was close. I, yeah. I, I remember. <laughs> uh, I was sitting. Upstairs, and I, of course, one of the seven cars, it wasn't hard to keep up with. And it's a, I had a point picked out right beside a poster in the flag stand. I said, The first one reaches that, that's who wins it. And it was so close. Wayne looked back at me, and, and I radioed down and told him, I said, Whoever it was, I said, That's who won it. Yeah. And they was a big argument because they thought, you know, depending on which angle you're sitting at, but I mean, I was sitting straight at the flag stand upstairs, yeah. and I had the front part of the flag stand, which are reached the Front part of the flag stand first. That's who won. Yeah, and that's how I judge who won the thing. Of course, they get a lot more sophisticated now. You know, they've got right. uh, uh, cameras and yeah. Uh, yeah, what they call them uh, transponders. Transponders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got it down to a work of art now. Yeah, but I mean that was uh, that was a while back. Uh, you know, forty years ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the cars and stuff. Uh, you know, I, I know Purvis was driving like Raven cars. And yeah, had Baker engineered engines, so they had good race cars and, and they did and and things at, at that time. And stuff. They started when nine sixty showed up over here. They had a T six, a had a six T six, and a C six. Now you talk about hard to keep up with. All yeah. three of them same color. <laughs> all had the same writing on them. Everything. And they was really hard to keep up with. But they come in here with all them coilovers and all that stuff. They were probably the first one. Then all of a sudden, it started catching on. Next thing I know, Peppers got them. And then there's some more cars start showing up. When they, that's when the money started really getting dropped yeah, in on their right. cars. And it's unbelievable. I know you know. Uh, you probably got in it just because you were a fan. But that's all I Yeah, that's all. the people that it takes to run a race and, oh, Lord. And, and what it takes just to run a Saturday night show as yeah. far as a purse and, and the concession stand and you were hands on. Uh, and I tried to do it all. You tried to do it all. <laughs> yeah. I know uh, J. Paul uh, Smith, he built Crossflow yep. there and he hired people to run it and he would come around and just talk to you yeah. and he'd say, if you can't get satisfaction, then come see me. Right. But you were hands on. I, you you I, tried to cover all the bases. I, I wouldn't let nobody take none of the blame for nothing. I said, you got a problem, you come to me. Yeah. I said, you don't say nothing to my flag, you don't say nothing to the scorekeepers, nobody. I said, you got a problem, you come to me. Yeah. We'll talk it out and we'll figure out what the answer's going to be. Right. Uh, yeah, it takes a lot of people running a racetrack. I'd been around racetracks and never, ever realized what all it takes. I yeah. mean, they, it takes a bunch of people to run one of these things. And it's hard to satisfy everybody. Oh, yeah. I mean, well. <laughs> <laughs> if it ain't just one night, you got to be there every day. Yeah, it's every, every day. Night. I mean, it's, it's something to do, getting it ready. I start in watering on Thursdays and then water all day on Friday. I done the grading myself, bought me a grader. I, I pinned on somebody else. I don't say the name who was doing it, but I pinned on somebody else. They might, I tell them, I said, be there at 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock come, they don't show up. 5.30 comes, they're just now showing up, great to track. Well, I can't, I can't water, I can't finish watering because I need to track, you know, great. Yeah. <laughs> and finally I decided, well, I'm gonna buy me a road grader. Yeah. So that's, I bought a road grader. Yeah. <laughs> Never been on a road grader in my life. <laughs> but, but you'll you figure up, it out once yeah, you get on it. Yeah, 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 but you put up guardrail, you done everything. I done it all, you, you yeah. done a little bit of everything. And then, um, you know, like you say, we're prepping the racetrack and, it, it's a full time job, and yeah, and you were trying to work another well, job. Well, you had to take care of the, the concession stands. My, get well, my out. wife now, she was my girlfriend at the time. She pretty much overseen all that, but I mean, I done anything else in there that had to be done. He you know, like tore up, you know. I was the one that had to figure out a way to fix it. But yeah, she took care of all that part, of getting all the food and ordering it and and everything. And uh, actually, the concession stand where the money was at. I don't know. That's the best money you <laughs> make was the concession stand. <laughs> 
<laughs> it didn't have an argument that much. No, there wasn't no arguments about that. And, and all you had to pay was the help. And you was good to go. Whatever's left is yours. But it sounded like you enjoyed it, though. I did. It? I really did enjoy it. Uh, but I try to enjoy everything I'm doing. If you're not, yeah. if you're not happy with what you're doing, you're not going to be successful, I don't think. That's exactly And right. I want to be successful at running a dirt track. Uh, it was just the times. The times was hard. I think the interest then was I paid it one time. I paid 20% on this place here. I know it's hard to believe, but in the 80s, check your records, interest hit eight, hit 20%. Yeah. And, but unemployment was high, and it was just a rough time during that. And we still done, I thought, pretty good for time being so hard. But I didn't realize it because I was young. You know, I wasn't like 30, 32 year old. Wow. And I didn't think nothing about it. I thought, Everybody's yeah. got money. <laughs> they got a job. They yeah. got money. Tell, yeah. tell us what uh, what the entry fee was and, or what it cost to get in the pits. And... It was pretty cheap. Uh, it ain't nothing like it is now. <laughs> uh, when I run this track here, it's four dollars to get in the grandstands, seven dollars to get in the pits, and I'm paying as much then as they're paying now. I don't know how I've done it. I don't guess I've done it real well. Uh, I finally closed the place down, but. Uh, we make money. The problem you got with the dirt tracks, you've got a lot of variables. Everything be fine here, and it can be raining right over here <laughs> two miles across town, yeah. and the people won't come. Yeah. The cars will probably show up, yeah. but you got to have the grandstands. you got to have people in the grandstands. It takes all that to work, to make everything work right. And it, uh, it'll take its toll eventually, you know what I mean? Yeah. And Everybody so, needs a dirt track one time. It's so important, too, like uh, uh, I've told people before, it, although you didn't have things back then like social media and stuff, so most no. of the people that came to see your races, they didn't know Buck Simmons or they didn't know Billy Moyer. No, you know, no. They, they knew Pepper and Yeah, and they knew Earl Lawrence. Yep. They knew the local, the local guys yeah. that raced yeah, with sure you every Saturday night. And uh, it's just important uh, as far as... Saturday night racing to have a strong, that's how you build a strong racetrack is you, you have these rivalries and, mm -hmm. and guys that race with you regular. It just takes a long time to build on that. To, you know, we just going. drew mostly our weekly program come out of Chevrolet or Winchester, Sparta, Crossville, and of course, McMillan, and uh, maybe a few out of Smith and Woodbury, but uh, they were all pretty much, you know, pretty close by. But, uh, our advertisement, you know, I spend a lot of money on radio. Well, it didn't go nowhere but right here locally, basically. Right, right. And most people here knew about the racetrack. Right. And uh, if we'd had the things they got now, you know, like say social internet, media and yeah, internet yeah, and yeah, Facebook yeah. and all that, uh, we, we probably could have done a better job than what we did back then. If I wasn't so old, I wouldn't care to try it again. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'll be honest. I mean, I, I, the bunch we uh, contact with, I, I, everybody said, well, why, don't, why don't they do it again? So you may, you may yeah. want to do it again then. I don't know whether my wife will go along with yeah. that or not. I'd hate to, I hate to you, bring uh, that up to her. <laughs> you did something uh, positive and stuff uh, because you had a son, Wade Whitmore, mm -hmm. and uh, he started racing. How long ago has it been now that he started racing? Uh, he started. Friend of mine I met that worked up there for him, uh, Jeremy Holesclaw, uh -huh. nine seven nine. He, yeah. me and him got to be friends uh, for some reason. Just we just sort of clicked. Yeah. And poor old Jeremy, he died about a year ago, year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. And he kind of got weighed into the racing part of it. And I don't know how Bree got into it, but he, she got into that mini cup, and that's when Wade that's got started. That's the That's granddaughter. Yep. And. Uh, and she's done real well at it. I mean, she's been yeah. good at it. She wins a lot she's, under she's, she's won, she yeah, won two she's championships. Yes, yeah, she's won two See her with the trophies. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, she does and old grandpa, job. he helped her out too yeah. whenever she, <laughs> when she wins. Well, who uh, did? Uh, who got into it first, Breer? Well, I think, I think uh, Wade bought a car and started, and then somehow or another, right there about the same time, they, they found out about these mini cups. They started running the mini cups down at uh, Thunder Hill. And he come up with a, come up with one somewhere or another. And next thing I know, we was going over to the races. And all that in line, they run so many classes like you're talking about. Yeah. They race all night over there. Yeah. You know, from here, it's a two-hour drive. Yeah. And then when they're still racing at midnight, yeah. you know, you're not going to be back real early. <laughs> <laughs> but now he's, I mean, to be start, he probably started late 
Yeah, he's still alive. Because compared to now, they start when they're like four or five years old. But right. he started late in life, but yeah. he's doing a great job. Yeah, he's do, he's picking up. He's doing a lot better. Uh, and it, it just takes time. I mean, it's uh, and he it's will a, race. I mean, he, he likes, likes to go to the races. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He he wants to race. Yeah. He bought he bought just bring a brand new car. I, see, I was going to ask you about uh, that. I, I don't know the, the dollar yeah. value or nothing. Never asked. Yeah. None of my business. <laughs> but uh, it's brand new. Yeah. Yeah. And I've seen video of where she's been practicing, maybe over mm -hmm. the Lloyds over there around Chattanooga. And uh, she makes some really good she laughs. She makes some good laughs. Yeah. She, uh, I reckon she's from close to her daddy, you know, yeah. within a second or two yeah. behind her daddy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Pretty exciting, I guess. To, to be able to race that, she's she she's not she ain't afraid of nothing. Don't race. Yeah. <laughs> now, how old is she? She'll be sixteen, March twenty second. Wow, That's, she's on her way then. Yeah, That's yeah, she's great. on her way. She's been racing now. Them uh, the mini cups I know for two years, maybe three years. She might have raced them three years. When's she gonna debut her, her car? It's you know, her first the, race. I Wade said something the other day. I was talking to him, and he they're supposed to be getting a route put on it now. He showed right. me the pictures of it. It really looked good. Uh, I don't know for sure. Pretty yeah. soon, I say she's anxious. She she can't oh, wait. Yeah. She's been on me, want me to tire this out down here and build a racetrack down the bottom <laughs> for her to practice some. That might be a good thing. Uh, and, uh, I don't know whether it would be a good thing or not. <laughs> so from going to, uh, from building soapbox derby cars and running them down Post Hill Road to yeah. owning the Mac Mill Speedway to helping you your son and your granddaughter racing's been good right yeah it's been it's just something i've enjoyed i, I love dirt racing i mean well, i'll watch it for a wheel try to get. <laughs> <laughs> well i've I, I, I got a partner yeah. up here in the house and i don't know whether she's gonna yeah. try it again or yeah. not but yeah. i wouldn't be afraid to i mean right now you know with the the well the money's so much different everything's yeah. so much different and i don't know I wouldn't care to go partner with somebody and try yeah. it. I'll be honest. You know, if somebody approached me about it, I'd say yeah. you'd probably fall for it. And you're still sponsoring uh, the granddaughter. Yeah, I, I help him point yeah. Opinion, yeah. There you go. Absolutely. Jimmy, she'll, I she'll tell you. win 300 and I'll give her five. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> she won more than the feature hey, for, that's, for that's the late box. Keep, yeah, keep, keep them going. That's yeah, exactly right. yeah. But, Jimmy, it's been so much fun coming out and looking at the old racetrack, and we're going to have some video of of that to put with this and and uh it's just been really a lot of fun gary i mean you got anything else that you want to ask jim here i don't me and him know each other since we kids yeah a long time and uh, we, we raced here together yeah we raced here together we've had a we've had the 70s, together. sometimes in yeah. the 70s, early 70s yeah and then uh so we've had, we've we've been around for a, for a long time but we've always enjoyed it it's been fun yeah it's a lot of fun racing. I mean, if you ain't never drove one, you really need to sit down in one. It's it's exciting. It's, it is, <laughs> it is, it is. I mean, it's educational. Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you'll get an education real fast. I never got to win a race out here, but I, I'm kind of looking forward to walking around the racetrack when the sun's shining and, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, you know, stand on the front straightaway. <laughs> I never got to do that, but, but I'm kind of looking forward to doing that right there. But, Jimmy, it's been great. I, I can't thank you enough for, for your hospitality oh, yeah, that's yeah. come out. Everything enjoy really talking to you. We appreciate it, it and absolutely. And man, we'd probably want to do this again sometime. Yeah, All right. Well, we'd probably need to get an early start. So <laughs> yeah. We've got some real stories to tell, I'm sure. <laughs> absolutely. I don't know what would video. Or not. <laughs> <laughs> they, they'd be good to hear. <laughs> well, if you ain't got anything else, then we'll conclude this episode of Southern Dirt Motorsports. And we like uh, ask that you guys like this and subscribe to the to the channel. And for Steve Winstead, we're going to sign off. See y'all later.